with you and see you all here today. And on behalf of our risen Lord and Savior, I welcome you one and all. Also welcoming you who are worshiping with us through Facebook. We're glad that you're here. And also later in YouTube, uh, we're glad that you're worshiping with us later in the day. Welcome. Several announcements for the good of the body gathered here and virtually um, in the area. First of all, next week is Mother's Day Sunday, and um, we are going to be having a um, special treat. The Keystone Brass will be here. They have special um, covers on their instruments for protection, and uh, it's quite a joy. If you've never heard them before, you really want to be a part of that and experience that. And if you have, you know what I'm talking about. So come next Sunday as we celebrate um, the resurrection and also lift up uh, all women in the church as mothers of, of the world. Also want to say that Upper Room devotionals are here. Um, I'm in contact with a sister church and they had leftover ones from the last couple months. And so I thought I'd put them here and see if anybody's interested. If you want a short, meaningful, daily devotional, um, they're located on the uh, table, or not on the table, by the closet door. And I invite you to take one for yourself. And if you know someone else that might like it, please do. And we'll see if um, you have interest in a, a daily devotional. Um, so uh, let me know uh, your feedback on that as well. I want to say too that outdoor services are coming on May 16th, weather, weather permitting. And um, so uh, you will need to sign up for those as well if you want to come to that one. But we want to start those at 1045. So they'll be outside. Um, we're going to start here in the back lawn, but we might explore other possibilities as well. And we'll see how that goes. The last thing I want to lift up is to say that um, Family Promise is coming, where we support uh, families um, who are going to um, more stable places in their lives with their, where they live and where they work. And uh, we're not hosting them. However, we are looking for people to prepare meals or give gift cards so that the meals can be bought uh, for them and they can actually prepare them themselves. So Kathy Eric uh, is heading that along with um, Linda. Um, so we um, praise God for their leadership, and we hope and pray you'll be able to support our efforts. And um, you can read more about it in the yellow sheet in your bulletin. These are the things I wanted to lift up for us today. And on that note, I invite you to rise and share the peace and love of Christ with one another.
Come, people of God. For once we were not a people at all, but now we are God's people. Let us worship God together.
Soon I'll be jumping over this railing. <laughs> I'll get even closer to you. Um, the reason I bring this up is not only to give you an update, I want to thank you for your cards, and I want to thank you for your prayers, and I want to thank you for your thoughts over these past several months. Um, I was reminded that I uh, need to thank you because across the street from me, there is a family, and they have a young girl, oh, about six or seven, and she was praying for me as well. And their parents told me that. And sometimes she was coached, or her parents encouraged her to remember me, but there were other times on her own that she says, oh yeah, and she calls me Mark, and oh yeah, pray for Mark and his hip. And so that really touched my heart to know that her and people like yourself are remembering to pray for me. And so I want to let you know that praying really matters. It really matters because we let God know what's on our hearts, what we think is important, what we would like to see happen. But it also, especially when we let people know we're praying for them, that it also touches their hearts and makes them feel good to know that somebody like yourself is thinking about them and remembering them before God. So I want to encourage you to pray, um, to give thanks for things, of course, things in your life, like your mom and your dad and your house and your things that you have and your friends and the chance to go to school and learn and how healthy you are and things like that, but also to pray for other people. And also I would encourage you to let them know that you're praying for them because really that touches their hearts as well. Well, thank you for your cards and your prayers. God bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. And now I invite you to join me in our prayer of illumination. Let us join not only our voices, but our faith as we pray to God. Let us pray. Grant us, O oh God, your Holy Spirit, to reveal the things beyond our seeing and hearing and imagining which you have prepared for those who love you, that we may share the secret depths of your wisdom, understand the spiritual gifts you have bestowed on us, and speak them in words not found by our human wisdom, but alone through the gift of your Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the, the reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Now after Peter and John had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news of many villages of the Samaritans. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down to, down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. He got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before his shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humil in humiliation justice and denied him. Who, who can describe his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. <clears throat> the eunuch asked Philip, 
About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and starting with the scripture. He proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the, and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Here ends the speaking word. Over the years, I've uh, listened to people who are, were in the service or are in the service or watch some shows on TV about the service or the military and uh, the, about the value of high technology, aircraft carriers, and airplanes and missiles and drones and, and uh, all kind of high tech uh, equipment. Um, but all of them say sooner or later that sooner or later there needs to be boots on the ground. Sooner or later it comes down to people engaging people. Sadly, there can be no real lasting victories or goals um, without that being part of the equation. And I bring that up because I think, although I have no experience in the military, I think I have some experience in the church, and I think it's the same way. In the church, we have resources that the early beginning church didn't have. We have Bibles that lore, and if you know somebody that wants a Bible or you want a Bible, let me know and I can get you one or we can get them one. We now have a face on the internet with our live streaming our worship services and putting them up on YouTube for the whole world to see if they tune in. We have a beautiful building that we are uh, functional and we're working to maintain and improve it. We have uh, at least two ply toilet paper. <laughs> we. Uh, we have programs and activities for, for all ages, and we're working to get back to those things. We have our own style of music and worship that we own and we claim, and there's a, there's a place for this style of worship in the world today. <clears throat> we have a wonderful location. We have many, many resources here. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It's not all that we need. It's not all that matters. Oh yeah, the people that come here, that they, a, a good portion of them say, hey, there's something here I want to be a part of. But there are many, many more people out there unchurched, disconnected from God and church. And the only way they're going to get reached unless uh, by mistake they wander in here or they going through the internet surfing, they find us or other churches like us, that we need, the church needs, God needs boots on the ground. God needs people ultimately sooner or later engaging other people with the good news of Jesus Christ and even better, perhaps even trying to be the good news of Jesus Christ. There's a world out there that what need, people need the Lord. You remember that song? Can we rely on our technological uh, talents and abilities and resources alone? How in the world did God work to build a church before internet? Before the church had buildings? Before the church had written Bibles? Do people? In our reading today, it comes from Acts of the Apostles, and there are those that say, really, that's a wrong title for this book. It really should be Acts of the Holy Spirit. 
Not that the apostles don't play an important role, but the Holy Spirit plays a more important role in moving the church along and making the church come embodied in the world. In our reading today, we meet a very interesting character. We meet an Ethiopian eunuch. Ethiopians means that he is African. It means that he has come a long way, perhaps as much as 1,200 miles to Jerusalem to worship God. How many people would go 1,200 miles to worship God? We know that he has an important job. He runs the treasury for the queen of Ethiopia, Candace. We know that he is one of the few people of those times who could read either Hebrew or Greek because he was reading from one of Jesus' favorite books, Isaiah. And he would have had to read one of those two ways to understand it. We knew that he also was also devoted to the Jewish faith because of his willingness to read from Isaiah. Even if he didn't fully understand what it was being said, he tried to get it. And another thing we know about him, that he was a eunuch. And a eunuch, for those that don't know, is somebody who was either born with, a male who was born with um, parts of his body gone, or else they were in life, something happened to remove those things. So here he is, uh, and this is important to know because in Deuteronomy there was nobody who was in that condition could really go into the temple of the Lord. He would not be allowed in the temple to worship. He came all that way, 1,200 miles, to be told, you can't come in here. Imagine that. To be told that there's something wrong with you, even if you were born that way. That you cannot worship here. And so he goes worshiping as best he can, I guess, back down, 1,200 miles back to his journey. Oh yeah, there's one other thing. Perhaps the most important thing we know about this man is that God cares about him. That God knows him and values him and wants him to know that it's a new day and that three chapters away from where he's reading in Isaiah later that we find out, is a part where it says that one day eunuchs will be welcomed in the house of the Lord. And God wants him to know that that day is now. But how's he going to get that message to him? There's no internet. Boots on the ground. He sends Philip. I imagine Philip there was just sitting around thinking he has a nice day off, right? Chillaxing. Philip, I got a job for you. Oh yes, Lord, what is it? I want you to go down the road to, to Egypt until I tell you who until I tell you when to stop. Okay, Lord, I'll do that. And then after that, he's going, and then finally, okay, Philip, he's in that chariot. I want you to go talk to him. He runs up to him, and then Philip, you know, notice what Philip says. He doesn't say, hey, I'm here on a mission from God. I want to tell you everything I know about Jesus. No. What does he say? A simple question. He says, do you understand what you're reading? Now the man could have said, the Ethiopian could have said, oh yeah, I know, just go away and leave me in peace. But he didn't. He said, how can one know unless one has somebody to help me understand? The writer here, is he talking about himself or is it someone else? And he invites Philip to get in the chariot with him to talk about this. And from the beginning of with this passage, how the early church has seen in Isaiah that this, this one that went as a sheep to the slaughter was Jesus on his way to the cross. And beginning with that, he began to explain and share everything he knew or perhaps believed about Jesus. They must have been talking also about how to become a follower of Jesus because eventually they get to a place and the unit goes, oh, there's water there. What's to prevent me from getting baptized? Nothing. And he got down and he baptized him and he went away joyous. He was so joyous, in fact, I guess he didn't know Philip was swept up by the Spirit and disappeared. But in a journey that began in perhaps some disappointment on the inside looking, outside looking in, 
going through the desert, finding water that springs up to eternal life. What a journey that was for that unit. And it was because Philip was willing to go and engage him, not with fists, but with the good news of the gospel, that you are loved and accepted and claimed by God, just as you are. Not try and live better, but it's just as you are. Are there people today that need to hear that message? Are there... Um, where, where's he from again? Ethiopia, thank you. Ethiopia eunuchs out there who, who need to hear that what they've done is not so bad that they're excluded from God. That who they are, they're not excluded from God. Are there people that you and I know that need to hear that message? Oh, they'll hear it if they come in here, right? If they find their way to the corner of Trent and Penn Avenue, if they find their way into this worship service through the internet, they'll hear that, right? But where are they going to hear it out there? If they never grace a church. Who's, who's God sending to share that message if it's not you and me and other Christians from time and from time to time. Now it would be great, wouldn't it, if the Holy Spirit would go to us like he did with Philip. Hey, Mark. Hey, Lori. Hey, Drew. I want you to go to aisle seven at the supermarket. And when you get there, I'll tell you who you're going to talk to. And when you get there, there's somebody there. And now I can get, there's the one right there, the one with the card. She needs to hear the good news. She's open to hearing the good news. Go talk to that person. But it doesn't work like that for us, does it? But does that mean that the Holy Spirit's not nudging us from time to time? Listen, pay attention. Have you ever walked by somebody, maybe in aisle seven at the supermarket, and they're sad? And you think to yourself, you know, I, could, I should probably say something, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. Maybe that's a time for us to step in and say, you know, oh, I'm sorry, but you, I'm, but you seem a little sad here. Now, they might go talk to the hand and go away. <laughs> but they might say, what? Well, I am. And here's somebody I can unload to. Because I don't know other people I can unload this to. Somebody who I don't know. And maybe you could offer to pray with them. And maybe you could say, I'll pray for you when I go home, too. Maybe the Holy Spirit talks to us like that. Or maybe you're over in aisle 11 and somebody's really happy. You ever been around somebody really happy? I'm really happy in the dessert aisle at their supermarket. <laughs> but you know, someone's really, someone's, oh, it's true. <laughs> someone's really happy and you go, Ma, you're really happy today. What's, what's going on? I'm, I'm, um, could you tell me? And again, they might go, uh. Oh, but most likely when they're happy, they're like, yeah, I just won the lottery, $2 million. And it's a chance for whatever it is. You get, hey, thank God for that, right? And, and it's a chance what you're, you're engaging and see how they respond. They might go, oh, don't talk to me about your God now. Or they might go, yeah, thank God for that. And you could go, hey, I go to Bowsman, that great rocking church there at the corner of Trent and, and Penn. Where do you go? Oh, I don't go to a church. Hmm. Well, maybe you can come and I'll come one of these couple of weeks and, and I'll meet you. I'll even sit with you. Maybe that's how the Spirit works. And last but not least, you're finally checking out. You got your groceries there and somebody's a dip dot to the cashier. Mean or short with them or her. And maybe if you have real nerve, you could say to that person, hey, what are you talking about? But maybe when you get up there, you go, that person was a real dip dot. I'm sorry about that. You didn't deserve that. Do you think that maybe he or she might appreciate that? And then you could go, I'm going to pray for the soul of that person that they don't end up in H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> I think you get what I'm trying to say. You know, listen, watch, look. 
maybe there are opportunities for us that begin with what Philip did. Hey, do you understand what's going on there? Hey, you seem like you're in a really good mood. Now, you know, another thing I hear, somebody could go, well, Mark, Mark, you know, I didn't go to seminary. I don't really know the faith like you do. You know, I'm not really sure of scriptures. I'm not really all sure about everything. I wouldn't feel confident. Well, that doesn't matter. God wants you and will speak with you and bless that effort anyway. You know, there are times when I think that I spoke the exact words of Jesus here and there's not a sound at the end of the, at the, end of the reading line. And then there are other times when I think, oh, I kind of flubbed that one up a bit. Actually, I never really flub them up, but, <laughs> you know, it didn't come out right. And people go, you know, so that was like one of the best messages that I ever heard. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. What? You didn't see me 50 minutes in the corner here hidden going, oh, Mark, you forgot this. But the Spirit took what I did. And where that person was at, and they somehow got to the promised land. And so you don't have to know everything. You can, in fact, say, I don't know on that. But what I'm saying is there are some things that maybe you need to practice on. Yeah. So you're more ready. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, Diana, Rachel and Aaron are getting married on the, the, the 11th of November. The 5th of November. <laughs> I'll be late. <laughs> on the 5th. I'll be late. <laughs> but you're going to have the father-daughter dance, you know? And it's going to start off kind of traditional. We want to do some moves. So I'm working on some mama moves. Oh, yeah. The running man, the running man. You know? <laughs> it's like some shuffle dance. And you put this left foot out front here. You slide it back and you lift up your other one. And like this. And like that. And like this. Doesn't that look like a pretty bad running man? <laughs> so what do I need to do? I need to practice, so hopefully by the March, uh, November 5th, <laughs> whenever, whenever she's getting married, whenever she's getting hitched, then I'll be able to do a passable one when the time comes. And so maybe that's what you need to do. One of the things I would encourage you to do is write down your faith journey. Get a piece of paper out and write down your life. Write down those places where you participate in church, maybe where you first became a Christian. Who were some of those people that touched your lives along the way? Were there some periods in your life where you really doubted and wondered about God? Put those in there too. What is it that helped you get through that and get to a better place? If you are in a better place? And write that down so you, and learn that and know that. If you have a couple teachings of Jesus that really matter to you, that have found their way in your life, remember that and, 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 and be ready to share why. That might be a chance to say how Jesus has meant something to me and this is two of the ways that he really has made a difference in my life. And I would also encourage you to kind of have a summary of why Jesus came. You hear it from me every now and then at communion time, right? It comes from Luke. That Jesus that walked on this earth, he had a vision or understanding of God that God loved and claimed everybody. Not just most or half or a quarter, everybody. And that was good news to people who, like the eunuch, like the prostitute and tax collector and sinner. But it wasn't good news to the religious people of his day. And so they talked back and pushed back on that, and they ended up getting him arrested and killed and beaten by the Romans. And on the third day, when he rose again, that's biblical language to say what Jesus said was right, what Jesus said was true, that God truly does love and accept everybody. And that's a message you take to the person, right? When that you are loved and claimed by God. You matter to God. There's no looking on the outside in for you. You are accepted if you believe that and accept that. And you and I can do that, can't we? Can't you and I do that? And then I would also encourage you just to remember uh, the, the story of the prodigal son and share that along. Even Jesus says, and, and that ought to be enough for the spirit and the person to maybe work at. Maybe they've never heard that ever. 
And maybe they're ready to hear it in that moment when you are there. Look back in your life. How did you come to faith? Who was a Philip in your life? Who did God use to bring and nourish faith in you? And also to think today about who might God be calling us to be a Philip in somebody else's life? Just how we are. Yeah, maybe you can't do the running man like Pastor Mark. <laughs> but you don't have to. You just be yourself. And God, the Spirit, can make it happen. Because in the end, it's not Acts of the Apostles or the Acts of Thousand Church. It's the Acts of the Spirit working through the Apostles and through working Thousand Church. Amen. Our denomination and mainline Christianity is dying. Yes. It's dying, and we have more resources than the early church ever had. Mm -hmm. We have internet. We have the running man. <laughs> we have two black toilet paper. We have buildings. We have signs. What we need is boots on the ground. Yes. What we need is people willing to take a chance. Yes. And those people that take a chance are going to find sometimes some joyous, amazing things happen that otherwise wouldn't happen. It doesn't matter how long the UCC goes or Bowsman Church goes. In the end, what matters is, is that the story of God and the gospel go on. And in one form or another, it will, with or without us. Amen.
You sent the prophets. They teach us obedience. Your spirit guides us. We have assurance that you will never forsake us, that we are accepted and claimed now and forever. Jesus reveals all that we know of you. We give you thanks for his redeeming love. In spite of our wayward behavior, we claim the benefits of his sacrifice on our behalf. Help us to be still so that we may hear you speak amid the babble of human speech. Give us ears to listen to your voice. As demands are made and pressure mounts, put us at ease and sustain us by your presence. As we meditate on the love of Jesus, may the hope he gives be a haven and rest and renewal. Help us to find the discipline to be more faithful. Time passes quickly and our task can remain undone. Translate our desires into commitment. Keep us from putting off our decisions that demand energy and effort. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us when the way seems unsure and instill within us that measure of confidence that will enable us to act in faith and hope and love. By your power, make us bolder and better disciples. Give us the courage to forsake the easy life and risk personal security and an embarrassment so that others may learn of your love. May we be Phillips in other people's lives this day, we pray. Now we, each in our own way, I invite you to share who and what's on your heart in this time and spirit of prayer. Dear God, there is a time to sit and listen, there's a time to pray, and there's a time to go out and act. Bless our efforts as we leave here this day, that you will grace the lives of the people we meet and give us the courage to reach out to them as well. Here's where we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
and lose your shyness, find your tongue, tell the world what God has done. God is in Christ. God in Christ has come to say, live tomorrow's life today. As we leave here today, to go be Phillips in other people's lives and continue to let Philip, others be Phillips in our lives, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.